Okay, so thank you, Christian, for the opportunity and thank you all for being here. Uh, so here I want to, to, to present uh, an alternative way to, to generate biochar, to produce the biochar. It's the case of the biomass gasification process applied to, to thermal weeding. Um, so briefly, we'll go through the, the problem in the agriculture and the greenhouse gas emissions, the biomass gasification process and its limits. Huh? And then we will see the, the flame weeding technology and the biomass flame weeder we built uh, the, the last year. And we try to make some calculation on the biochar production. And then I show you some future works we're trying to put together. So uh, very, very quickly on this, uh, on this part, uh, you know better than me that uh, agriculture is a key actor in the greenhouse gas emission. And, uh, and the paradoxical situation is that at the same time, uh, agriculture is suffering uh, from, the, from the climate change. So uh, Europe is trying to put together a strategy to, to, to remove the, the carbon from the atmosphere and uh, to, to, to limit the, the, the greenhouse gas emissions also for, uh, for the agricultural sector. And among all the, the, the interesting solution, the biomass gasification is, of course, one of these uh, due to the, to the co-production of both single, so fuel gas and, and biochar. So the, the, the gasification is now used in internal combustion engines and maybe gas turbines and other, other techniques for heat and power production due to the fact that at the end of the process, you obtain uh, a fuel gas. So you have the same gas that, uh, uh, let me take you less, okay. Now the same gas that has a higher rating value between four and seven megajoule normal cubic meter, which is of course not uh, good as the, the natural gas, but uh, yeah, it's from biomass. So it's something that could be sustainable. So nowadays the application we have from the gasification system and thanks to its scalability ranges from megawatt of thermal and electrical power to few kilowatt. Now we go from medium scale to, to even micro scale. And we will focus on this kind of system in this presentation. This is a, a gas fire from the whole power labs. This is a power pilot 30. It's able to generate uh, 25 kilowatt of electrical power output and 40 kilowatt of thermal power output when in, uh, it's uh, working in CHP mode. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the microscale gasification, it's uh, interesting when you try to couple it with agriculture, since uh, especially in Italy, so the region from where I'm speaking, the Emilia-Romagna region, we have a, a, a lot of farms, but they are very, very small. So you see that the average dimension of a, of a farm is around four or five hectares. And uh, the, the nice thing of gasification is that you can, you can recover the prunings from maybe from vineyards and then try to convert them into hopefully wood chips, but it's quite difficult to work with the uh, wood chips that comes from the, the vineyards or into, into pellet. And then you can fuel a gasifier uh, using, using this pellet. And uh, the, the interesting thing is that you can uh, generate uh, uh, distributed uh, power in each generation, uh, avoiding the, the burning uh, of this uh, kind of biomass in situ. That is something that's happening nowadays. So farmers try to get rid of this, uh, this biomass that uh, actually has uh, no value nowadays, uh, burning it uh, on the field and generating a lot of greenhouse gas emissions and, and pollutants. And, uh, and uh, uh, other things, but uh, uh, this is this is uh, really really nice. But the thing is that uh, you know, and as Thomas Reed said, no, everything is fine. You start a new project with new idea, and uh, you construct the new gasifier. But then you realize that there are a lot of stars in the same gas, and then the rest of the time, there's money is spent trying to solve this problem, and uh, most of the time, the uh, the gasifier quietly uh, disappear. So nothing is, uh, is, uh, is working. So it's hard to make things work with, uh, with gasification, with seeing gas. And uh, when you go for very, very small, uh, so for micro scale uh, uh, gasification system like this, uh, so around a few kilowatt of thermal power of electrical power output, you know, the, the labor associated to, to the maintenance of the machine is the more than 50% of all the cost you need to, to afford. Uh, over the lifespan of this machine. And uh, the, the why is that uh, you have to, 
to deal with an engine that uh, needs to have uh, a clean gas and a cold gas to work properly. And so with this kind of system, you, uh, you need to have a, a cooler, a gas cooler here and uh, a filtering stage before to entering the, the, the engine with the gas. And so you have a, a part that is working more or less perfectly. That's the gas making system. The, the, the biomass hopper and the reactor, then you can have a, a small cyclone that is working, of course, perfectly, but then you enter in the, in the gas conditioning system that it's a, it's a mess on the maintenance side. Since you have uh, the position of particulate matter on the, on the heat exchanger, you have the position of tars and, of course, particulate matter on the filter bags, maybe, and uh, you have tar deposition on the uh, mechanical components of the engine. This is a a throttle valve after a few hours of running of this engine. So the idea is that you need to have a, a technician, a person that uh, 24 hours per day is uh, around the power plant uh, and uh, maintain it. So this is, uh, this is maybe environmentally sustainable since you don't have to collect biomass from a large basin, but it's not, of course, uh, um, uh, economically sustainable. So. If we want to stay with the, within the agricultural uh, sector, and if we want to use gasification, since it's cool, we, we, can, uh, we can generate fuel gas, we can generate biochar, and so we can do something useful with the fuel gas. And uh, we need to have simple systems. And uh, hopefully, we need also to use this simple system to increase the farmer competitivity. So here at the B Lab, the, the laboratory, the bioenergy efficiency laboratory, where I, I'm studying, we developed a, a system that uh, uses a gasification uh, device uh, to generate thermal, thermal weeding. So we thought about the thermal weeding process. And uh, what is thermal weeding? So uh, maybe some of you or all of you already know, uh, it's a agronomic technique that uses heat to eliminate the weeds. Basically, you have a, a flame to simplify, you direct the flame toward the undesired weeds that you want to eliminate. And uh, if you uh, keep the plant above 50 or at maximum 100 Celsius degrees for a very, very short time, fraction of a second, you will see that in the next few, uh, few days, four or five days, the, the plant will dry and then it dies. Uh, so this is, this is nice since you can eliminate uh, all the components that are needed for the engine. So you eliminate the engine from the gasifier, you eliminate uh, then the, the gas conditioning stage, so the, the heat exchanger and then the filter, and then you are going to remove, I'm uh, going back uh, a little bit, you're going to reduce uh, this, uh, this part of the, of the cost you have. And so you try to have a, a, a more sustainable system from the economical point of view. And the system is more or less uh, like uh, this one. So you still have the biomass offer, the feeding system, the reactor, the cyclone, since it's a simple component and it's useful to, to eliminate the, the coarse dust. And then you basically have a flare. Hmm? So you burn the singers into, into flare. If you direct the flare toward the undesired weed, you can then um, you can generate the thermal weeding. Thermal weeding is something that is not new and it's uh, currently used, but the, uh, the cons is that it's uh, run with LPG tanks, as you can see here. And uh, this is, of course, not sustainable, both from the economical point of view, since the, the LPG it was around 2.3 euros uh, per kilogram last year. Now I think that the situation got worse. And, uh, um, and of course, it's not sustainable from the, um, from the environmental point of view. But this technology, it has many, many uh, pros. So it's uh, available in organic agriculture. It's, it's okay in organic agriculture, so you can run it. And uh, you can avoid the use of chemicals using this technique. And uh, you can do this at high treatment speed. So generally, these machines run, uh, so travels at five, six kilometers per hour, which is a good speed in agriculture. And um, it's the same speed, more or less, that you uh, use with, uh, with chemical spraying. So it's something that is really competitive with chemicals. On the cons, uh, 
uh, you have also the, the fire rigs. So there is a likelihood of generating fires with this technique. Since you have an open flame, you have high temperatures, and then, uh, of course, you can generate fires. But here we need to, 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 to say something, since uh, uh, you cannot run this application, I was, as I was saying at the beginning uh, with uh, uh, Christian, uh, you cannot apply this, uh, this technique uh, in, uh, in, cli in uh, desert climate. But if you are in desert climate, of course, you don't have uh, nothing to weed. So uh, this technique is applicable in rainy climates, uh, and it's in rainy climates that you have uh, weeds to remove. So if you indulge, so you can remove this weed after maybe a uh, rainy period. So the, the, the grass is wet, uh, and of course, the fire rate is proximal to, to zero. And uh, so, Let's go to the to the prototype. This is the, our very very ugly prototype, uh, but it's functioning actually. And uh, we made it uh, starting from the power pallet thirty gasifier, of course, as I said, we removed the critical components, the, the and the engine and the filter and the um, heat exchanger. That are also the components that uh, uh, compose the, the 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 cost of the of the machine. So they are the the the, the component that cost more. And we built this, this kind of prototype. You can see the, the reactor, the cyclone, the flare. There is also a generator, but the generator is used to run the uh, side channel blowers that is here that pumps air into the reactor. So everything is under pressure. And uh, here you have the char vessel from the cyclone and the char vessel here behind uh, that collects the char that comes from the, from the reactor. Well, you can see the, the flame that's generated from the from the combustion of uh, of the singers. The, this prototype can work in both two modalities. So the first one is the uh, diffusive mode without in air injection, or in the premixed mode. Uh, here you have air injection and mixed with the with the the, the singers. Mm, basically, here you can see temperatures around 900 Celsius degrees, and here we are more or less at 700 Celsius degrees. So there is no reason to run the the prototype in in this uh, in this uh, mode. Uh, we, in fact, this test we run the the prototype in uh, in premixed mode, and uh, as you can see about the fire risk, no, when you encounter something that is very very dry. There is, of course, the, the, the flame generation, no? uh, but the effect is uh, it's, uh, it's very, very nice. It's a very effective technique uh, to, to, to remove the weed. We test the, the prototype, so we carry the prototype over a, a forklift of a, of a tractor, and we run it through a, a vineyard. And after a few days, this, this was, I think, after one week and something, you can see the, the effect of thermal weeding. Of course, if you... If you stop the tractor without uh, uh, turning off the, the, the blower, uh, of course, you're going to, to burn the weed. But if the weed is green, as you can see here, there is no um, fire, actually a fire generation. So we can, uh, we can stay in safe. And uh, so starting from this test, uh, we, we put together a very, very simple model just to, model just to, to see where we can go uh, for the, for the biosol production if we apply this technique in, uh, in a vineyard and uh, we consider a one hectare, so a field, uh, uh, square field, and a uh, um, biomass consumption based on the test we run. So we had a biomass consumption of the gasifier of more or less 13 kilograms of biomass per hectare. The biomass we used is a A2 grade pellet, A2 grade pellet, but uh, we also run the power pallet 30 using vine pruning uh, pallets with, uh, with success in the, in the past. Uh, so, so considering this uh, biomass consumption, we can uh, produce uh, more or less the 5% of the biomass is converted into biochar and we obtain a small amount, uh, I, I understand a small amount of biochar that can be generated per hectare. Uh, and this amount can be um, increased if we if we move uh, the the reaction toward the, the biochar production. So if we shake more the grate and if we uh, unbalance the process toward the biochar production, we can rise this uh, uh, 
this biochar production. So we can consider more or less one kilogram uh, per hectare of biochar. And uh, if we if we do some projections, so if we if we try to to make a circular supply chain starting from the uh, recovering the wood from the from the pruning of the biomass from the pruning sorry of the vineyard, we can still generate the pallet. We don't need to run uh, the the power pallet thirty in power generation mode. So we don't need the engine. We don't need the other things. We just need to run our thermal weeder, and it, when, then we can produce biochar. Uh, if we scale this, uh, these results to, to the vineyard uh, surface we have in Italy, that's around 650,000 uh, of, uh, of factors, then we can estimate uh, a production of uh, uh, 1,300 uh, tons of biochar uh, per year. Uh, which uh, I understand again, it's a, it's a small quantity, but at the same time, you have removed the use of chemicals. Chemicals that I want to underline are still used in most of the cultivations here since they are in non organic uh, uh, production. And uh, uh, so, this, uh, this is the idea. Then you can also uh, use the biochar in the vineyard. Uh, we, we, we participated in a project, an initial project, a few years ago. And you, we we saw an increase in the in the maturation time of the of the of the grapes, and uh, then we yes, and then so we can go to the conclusion. Uh, we try to to give a, a second chance to the to the micro scale gasification, uh, building a simpler system, and we thought that thermal weeder thermal weeding is is one of these options actually. And uh, I think that this is a win-win win solution. So we can uh, eliminate herbicides, uh, building a competitive system. We can uh, replace the LPG that is currently used. Uh, and we can, of course, produce biochar that can be used in the, in the very same vineyard you're going to treat. I mean vineyard, but you can refer also to orchards or other lignocellulosic cultivation. And uh, at the, in this way, you can uh, simplify the conversion of these farms uh, toward the organic cultivation, uh, promoting their their competitiveness. Uh, of course, the fire risk is present, but I think I already addressed uh, it. Uh, and uh, what I can say is just a little bit on uh, future works. We applied for a national project on using uh, this this technique. Uh, so the idea is to uh, is to widen the the application of the thermal weeding also to urban areas, uh, managing the so using the 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 wood that that's coming from from the the green waste management maintenance and um, and then you can use also the biochar to uh, co-compost with the uh, with the with the, the municipally composting uh, plant um, so this is this is the idea and I want to thank you for your attention and if there is any question of course. Uh, it would be glad to, to answer. So thank you. Thanks, Nicola, for your presentation. It's a really interesting um, uh, take on, on biochar production. And I think it sounds really useful. Um, so from a biochar point of view, so what have you tested your, your chart? Do you have uh, any pH issues with your gasifier? Or? Well, uh, so on the quality of the biochar, I have the composition of the biochar. Uh, the biochar we obtained from the power pallet 30 in this test uh, was over the 70% of carbon content. Uh, I cannot remember other tests, but of course, yes, we, we've done some tests uh, on the biochar and we can share with you, of course. Um, so sorry for the first question. So if anyone <laughs> has any more questions, uh, please write in the chat or unmute yourself. So how much do you think that will cost this prototype or what do you, would you expect? Is that the price that a farmer will be able to pay or? Uh, we run some calculation and uh, we are in the range of the um, mechanical weeding system. Uh, we are in the range of uh, 6,000 to 8,000 euros for the, for the final machine. So it's it's okay. a very simple and affordable. Um, and um, so, do you, do you need? I, I guess you can you can adjust the the feedstock inputs for the amount of gas you need for the for the actual flame 
um, establishment. Is there any any possibility that you add a porosis um, reactor instead of a <coughs> gasification reactor and run this machine? Uh, so you need a lot of gas. One idea we we try to 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 put together is to is to oh, let's go back a little bit. So if you the the, the biomass you need per actor is more or less. Uh, 50 kilograms per year, more every hectare of vineyard you treat. But the vineyard generates more or less one ton of biomass per hectare. So you have a surplus of biomass. So the idea is that you can have a gasifier that burns more biomass, that runs more biomass, and then use some of the heat to run a pyrolysis unit parallelly. Yeah, okay. So you can increase the, the, the char production uh, without affecting the, the singles production. So, uh, yeah, I guess that, that makes more sense. <laughs> um, uh, and actually ask um, any detrimental issues to plants when treating weeds close to the roots? Sorry, I think this a general thermal weeding uh, question. So if there's any detrimental effect on uh, roots or stems of plants in the vineyard? No, in the vineyard there is no there is no risk. So the trunks are uh, uh, big enough to not being affected of the of the heat. Uh, so you can consider that the residence time of the flame is uh, in a fraction of a second. So you are uh, 0 0.1 second. So you you risk to burn just the the, the peel of the trunk, uh, but there is no mm, it doesn't affect the life of the of the plant. Okay. So do you do you plan to commercialize this or is that a research? Yeah, we are we are thinking about this. So uh, you also see uh, after my name there is Flexfire from a uh, fish competition mm -hmm. of a few years ago. Uh, we are putting together a, a spin-off of the university uh, based on uh, this technology, and uh, yeah, we are thinking to, to to do something. So yeah, I think it sounds great actually. Um, so Thanks. thank you very much. Um, if Thank anyone you. has a question, please just write. Um, other than this, we are perfectly on time this time. So thanks for both presenters to stay in the time limit. Um, oh yeah, okay, there's the North American Biochar Conference that I forgot again to mention. Um, and then Frank Stree had a question. Have you tested the clean char, um, nutrient poor char? as retardant or herbicide replacement. So you mean to put over the weeds? I would assume he means af afterward to, his, to stop weeds re coming back, maybe? Uh, no, we, we, ne we never tested it, actually, no. This is an interesting, uh, this is an interesting point of view. Uh -huh. No, never tested it. No, since in the in the project I show you, uh, they put the biochar and then they cover the biochar with uh, with soil again. So this this is a good point. Taking notes. Yeah, if you ever want to characterize your bio, just just um, drop me an email. Uh, mm -hmm. Always interesting to to get different charts. Okay, so. Um, Thanks again, Nicolo, for your presentation. Um, for anyone who wants to rewatch that, uh, I will upload this uh, both presentations in the next couple of days. Um, and before I forget it, so we have our next webinar in two weeks from now with Suzanne Alea from Geica Environment. Um, I don't know yet what you will be talking about, but probably a market analysis. Um, and then Anwar Islam about the comparison of different biochars and other biomasses for um, silver removal from water.